Howdy everybody, Cub here. Welcome to episode 207 of the Let's Play. And today, guys, we gotta do some big time resource gathering. So, uh, let me show you what we're gonna do today and what we need to gather and everything like that. So, first of all, the monorail, we will need some quartz to beautify that. A lot of quartz, a heck of a lot of quartz, um, to beautify that up. And we also want to go ahead and change these paths up. So, you see this path comes over here and just sort of simply terminates at this farm. Uh, and then there's nothing here that connects this part of the path to that. So we're going to make a path that comes right down here, goes along here, and then it probably will split off like right around here and go up to the uh, the quartz monorail up there. So that's one thing we have to do. Uh, there have also been some great suggestions on a few little things to add to Zera Zera. Um, so some people have added or have asked me to add some things, so we'll do that. And I'll give some shout outs to some people for that. And also, uh, we need to start the school, so we have to get some clay blocks, so we have to go mining some clay. But, for right now, uh, I'm actually out of fuel, too, so let's go get some fuel. I'll show you here. We got no, <laughs> no blaze rods at all to power our furnaces. So we have nothing there, nothing in even the uh, auto smelter. And we do have some coal, but I don't really want to use coal. I'd prefer to use blaze rods. So, I'm actually going to grab my looting sword, which I hope is still intact over here. Yeah, Wither Skeleton Slayer. Yeah. We'll grab this. I'm going to put this one away for now. And also, we'll drop off the chainmail boots. There we go. Okay. So, yeah. We're going to go to the nether here, and we're going to get some, uh, some blaze rods. And also, I brought fire resistance potions and pearls so that we can... Um, yeah, mine some quartz. So let me just hop on to the nether here. Go to our newly decorated nether castle right here. Got some flowers that need to be disposed of. There we go. Okay, so let's get on out to our blaze farm here. It's been a while since we've been out there. But yeah, let's go ahead and go on down and see what we got down here. Everything should still be working normally. Got some blaze on the way there. Uh, by the way, these uh, this bar portal here, um, I actually did find out from uh, Panda4994 that this is actually a consequence of uh, updating to 1.8 from 1.7. Um, so yeah, thanks to Panda, that is now uh, confirmed what happened. I suspected that is what happened, but um, yeah, he confirmed that for me in a, a live stream that he, he did a few weeks back. So yeah. All right, on to the blaze farm. Here we go. So, if you guys haven't seen the blaze farm, uh, this is it right here. It uses a slime block pusher design. You basically put the blaze into a one wide hole. And then you can simply come down here, click this lever, press that button. And then, yeah, wait, wait until the blaze gets damaged here. And then just hit them like that. And then that, uh, yeah, that basically gets you all the blaze rods you can need. So, yeah, that's cool. Uh, we also have a second blaze rod, or not second blaze rod, second blaze farm over here. That uh, uses the same design. Right here. You can see it's also running at the current moment. Uh, and you can also activate both these at the same time by standing on this. So... I'm going to do that here. I'm just going to stand here for a little bit, get some blaze rods, and I'll be back. All right, everyone. So we got quite a number of blaze rods here. Let me just show you. So we got uh, those right there. I'm going to put those into the auto smelter, and those will uh, yeah, get us some fuel going on there. And also we got all of these. So quite a number of blaze rods. That will power our furnaces and our fuel needs for quite some time. But uh, I also need to now go ahead and I'll just put the rest of these in there. We got some other stuff too here it looks like. So I'll just throw those away. Put these in the appropriate areas. There we go. And there we go. Okay. So now I also want to grab this. So I'll grab these other blaze rounds too. But I want to grab this Fortune 3 pick because we're going to repair this pick here. And let's see. We're going to need not there. Here we go. Yeah, some sticks and some diamonds. 
because we want to be able to mine quartz with fortune 3 pick so we can get the most out of the amount we mine so here we go we'll just go ahead and yep repair that just like so fantastic all right and i'm just gonna go ahead and drop off my silk touch pick i also repaired this by the way uh so we'll just drop that off and we'll go mine ourselves some quartz So we mined for about an hour and we got about an inventory's worth of quartz blocks and not much else. Um, but yeah, I'm done with mining quartz for now. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go out to the to the uh, monorail and we're going to go ahead and decorate this thing up as best we can with what we got. Um, so first thing is to obviously go ahead and let me just get on up here and we're going to whoop, climb up the vine. There we go. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put down the blocks next to the the chariot here. So we we'll have to extend this line down all the way to the where you see the other line down there. So that's the first thing and then we'll start to fill out like around this. So we have to, we can like move it out and make like an arch or something over this. Uh, do the fun stuff basically. So yeah, that's what we're doing now and we'll go ahead and continue to put down some blocks. Okay, everyone, so you can see out here we got the monorail uh, now up and going. Uh, I'm going with like a striped pattern here. So I have some cyan stained clay there. I got some orange stained clay there. So we're just going to run those all the way down to the arena, uh, just like that. I think it looks okay. And while I'm building this up here, I want to go ahead and talk a little bit about outer space. Um, so it's a topic I am fairly passionate about, as many of you guys know. And also, I'm pretty knowledgeable on it. Um, so yeah, let's jump right in. So uh, first of all, I want to talk about New Horizons spacecraft uh, that flew by Pluto in July. And so it's been sending back some pretty amazing photos recently. I don't know if any of you guys have seen them. Uh, I did tweet out some uh, earlier this week. And here is one such photo. This is a photo of Pluto uh, at sunset. So this photo was taken literally billions of miles away from Earth. And you can see those mountains in the, uh, in the foreground there. They are actually about 11,000 feet tall, uh, or about 3,200 meters for those of you guys uh, not in the U.S. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty amazing. You can also see some uh, some surface features. Uh, there's like, an, uh, like a big ice plane. Uh, it's not water ice, I don't think. I think it's like frozen nitrogen, if I'm not mistaken. I'll have to look that up, though. Um... But yeah, it's it's pretty interesting uh, to see you know the surface of another world that's that no one has ever seen before up until you know <laughs> a week and a half ago when the uh, the photo was uploaded by NASA. And yeah, we'll we'll continue to get photos like this from New Horizon for the next uh, year or so uh, because the spacecraft's uh, uplink to NASA is quite slow. It's like dial-up speed. <laughs> so it, obviously, if you guys remember dial-up. Yeah, it took forever to get any sort of image <laughs> downloaded. So, yeah. Uh, that's really cool. There's also this photo of Sharon, which is Pluto's moon. And this is actually the highest resolution photo ever taken of Sharon. And, yeah, you can... Uh, an interesting fact about this photo is it was actually taken when the spacecraft uh, was closer to Sharon than the Earth is to the moon. So... Yeah, pretty pretty interesting. Um, and yeah, you can see some surface features on there that are, are quite interesting. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of research that goes into that. And, you know, how Sharon formed, if it was formed in a collision, or if it was captured by Pluto, or if they Pluto and Sharon somehow developed together. I'm kind of interested to see what they say on that, because it actually is applicable to the Earth. Uh, and how the Earth got its moon. So we'll see how that turns out. We'll see what uh, we'll see what the data says on that. So besides the New Horizon mission, there are a couple other things I want to talk about. Um, so one of those is NASA's Year in Space mission. 
Um, so if you guys haven't heard about this, this is a mission to study the effects of long-term weightlessness on the human body. Um, so currently there are uh, two people in the experiment, Mark Kelly and Scott Kelly, uh, both of them astronauts. Scott Kelly is actually right now uh, on the International Space Station. Uh, so he is currently in space. And his, his identical twin, uh, Mark, is still on the ground. Uh, he serves as like the control for this experiment. And yeah, they want to basically test um, what happens, like what happens to your health and what happens to your body as you experience weightlessness for prolonged periods. Um, so they're testing to make sure, you know, uh, testing to make sure that Scott Kelly doesn't go crazy in space, basically. <laughs> uh, make sure you don't lose your mind if you're in space for a while. Uh, they want to also test, you know, uh, the health effects, make sure your metabolism is maintained, make sure uh, your mental state is, um, yeah, not affected by long-term weightlessness. They want to make sure that your bone density uh, remains high with, with exercise, of course, uh, because, you know, if you don't if you don't have gravity weighing you down, um, your muscles tend to shrink because you don't really need them. And also your bone density decreases, so you have to remain pretty physically active when in weightlessness. Um, but yeah, they're studying the effects, long-term effects of weightlessness in preparation for uh, potential deep space flights in the future. So Mars, asteroids, stuff like that. Um, so that's pretty cool to see NASA sort of laying the groundwork for um, future deep space human, human uh, expeditions. So yeah, really exciting about, uh, stuff there. Uh, also, uh, I want to let you guys know that uh, SpaceX, uh, one of my favorite favorite space companies, rocket companies, <laughs> um, yeah, they are actually planning a return to flight soon. They are returning to flight on November 17th. Uh, as you guys know, in June, uh, they actually had a rocket explode um, a couple minutes after takeoff. And yeah, basically they determined the cause of that. It was a, basically what happened is, a uh, manufacturer told them that a, uh, a component, a strut is what it's called, uh, was strong, and it turns out it was not that strong. <laughs> so, yeah, obviously they are not using that strut manufacturer anymore, so um, they've replaced that with a new part, and they've actually also upgraded their rocket. They're using a new version of their rocket in the next uh, launch, uh, which has greater, um, greater thrust and greater uh, capacity to carry more stuff to the uh, to orbit um, so yeah it should be really interesting to see I'm really looking forward to it they've been grounded for the last uh, several months because of that accident but hopefully they can return to flight soon and get back on track um, so yeah I'll keep you updated on that um, it's gonna be interesting to see uh, the new ver the new the new rocket and what it looks like I'm really really looking forward to it and yeah uh, that's about it for space news right now, so I'm just going to go ahead and continue this down here, and we'll finish this up. I don't think we're going to have enough to quite make it to the end, but almost. So, yeah, we will uh, finish this up here, and then go get some clay. And so this is what the monorail looks like right now. This is all the quartz that I mined today, uh, put into it, and we still have about halfway to go. It's, well, maybe about two-thirds of the way to go. Uh, but it's looking good right now, and yeah, I will uh, return to this project uh, in the future and finish it up, finish up the, uh, last bit down there, that little bit of monorail. Uh, but I have to get more quartz for that, and I have to go mine clay right now, because we need that for the school. So let's go ahead and grab our shovel, and we'll drop off some resources, and we'll get some clay. Alright, so welcome to Zera Zera, guys. I gathered up a bunch of clay and smelted some of it into bricks. Uh, there is still quite a bit smelting back at the base, though. Uh, so we can't quite finish the school today, but I will show you sort of a crude first outline of it. Um, so let's go ahead and get started taking a look at this school. Um, so first of all, I should say I'm aiming for sort of a traditional brick and mortar school. Um, so I actually went to school in a <laughs> um, almost like a castle that had like gargoyles on the roof, like peering down at you ominously. Uh, it was kind of intimidating, but also kind of awesome. Uh, that we had, like, gargoyles and, like, monsters on the roof of my school. <laughs> uh, my in real life school. But this is going to be more of a traditional school. Uh, you'd see, like, anywhere in the U.S. or um, in England or uh, in any sort of developed country. Um, so, 
the entrance, the front entrance is going to be right here. We're going to have two front entrance, uh, two front entrances. So one will be right here. There'll be a double door there. Uh, there'll be a double door right here as well. Obviously, they're not the same height right now, so I have to sort of pick a height to build this at and also how to tier it. Uh, but that'll come a little bit later on. Uh, the the bricks are going to be the walls, and the half slabs are going to be the um, the hallways. So we'll have a hallway coming from here, hallway coming from here. Uh, we'll have like a little common sitting area right here uh, where people can just hang out and chill. Uh, we'll have a little bulletin board here, so we'll have like maps and stuff on this wall. Uh, this here will be an office, so it'll be like the principal's office or you know an administrative office of some type. Uh, then we'll have yeah this come around here. Uh, this will be all like hallway here, like this. It'll turn, go up here. We'll have some lockers here. So these I think we might make like functional lockers right here. Uh, so they might dispense books. I think someone suggested that in the comments of one of the previous episodes. Uh, over here we're going to have the cafeteria. The cafeteria is going to be like... Um, so you know how most schools have sort of like a, like an assembly line um, cafeteria type thing? Like they have like... You get your... your Green beans here, your macaroni and cheese here, your uh, ham sandwich here, etc. Your milk carton here, whatever. Um, it's going to be kind of like that. It's going to be like open air, so we'll have like seating here all along this. And it's going to be, you know, just open exposed to the hallway so anybody can come in and just grab something and go or sit down and eat. So that's what I'm doing for the cafeteria. Um, there'll be more lockers along the side of all these things here. Um, of all the all this wall here so this is all gonna be like a wall like this so we'll have lockers along this wall uh, going to the left here we're gonna have some classrooms this is I think classroom number three yeah uh, there's gonna be I think I have seven in total actually so that's the third one I'm not sure which which uh, subjects are gonna be in each each one but each one will have a different subject uh, like I said previously so this will be the second one right here and this entrance will be just like that right there. Uh, this one is the first one, class number one. This entrance will be right here. And then we'll have double doors at the back. It's sort of like an emergency exit type thing. So, yeah, we'll have that. Um, and I think we'll have those doors be like iron doors that only open whenever you um, hit the fire alarm. So that'll be kind of cool, like a fire escape type thing. Um, let's see, lockers obviously along this wall. This room here is the smaller room. I'm thinking about putting like a computer lab here because for some reason most schools, uh, it seems like their computer labs are really, really small. So I might just try and jam like a bunch of little desks with like computer screens uh, on in, inside this thing. So that'll probably be like the computer lab right there. Uh, then we'll have another classroom here. Another classroom here, so this is what, classroom four, so we'll have like classroom five here. So class five right there. And then this will be the class six right here. Class six. So that'd be the sixth classroom, or the seventh if you include the computer lab, I guess. Um, but uh, then we're gonna have a gymnasium that's gonna go right here so there'll be a double door that leads to the gymnasium and the gymnasium will be in this this area here I might have to have more space for it because I think I'm gonna go with a basketball court here um, and so I might have to move this road so it, it comes a little bit closer to the edge here and then it curves sort of out more like that and then does its thing right here where it snakes over so I might move this road a little bit to, so we can fit more uh, length into the basketball court. But uh, we'll have to see on that. And then I'm thinking about adding like a, like an entrance here and then maybe like a little like locker room over this direction perhaps. But um, we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. Um, yeah, that's that's basically it though. That's the that's the whole the whole school thing that I'm planning. Um, and yeah, again, the uh, the subjects I think we have are uh, potion brewing, enchanting, um, 
battle training, which I might change. That might might change. Physics or redstone, uh, history and geography, and then computers, right here in this small, small little cramped quarter. So let's just put down computer lab. There we go. Okay, so that is a sort of preview of things to come for the school in Zerzera. Uh, let me just go ahead and grab a couple of things here. Grab an anvil and some emerald ore. I'm going to dump off all these bricks and these slabs. And let's go ahead and take a quick snooze through the night. And so I also want to add a couple of small things that you guys suggested in the comments uh, over the last few episodes. Um, so first one is... Uh, by com a guy called Commander Spoon. So he actually suggested that we put an anvil or a few anvils in the butcher shop uh, as like a way that the butcher cleans uh, the meat that he sells. Uh, and I thought that was a great idea. I don't know why I didn't think of that before, but um, yeah, that's that's fantastic. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna place down some anvils here. I think instead of these stairs, it would be cool to have anvils here. So let's just go ahead and place these down on the corners right there and let's see you can also maybe let's see where's another spot we could put one at back in the back there now nah, I guess we could just put this one yeah we'll just put this one in the chest for now but that's a great idea commander spoon thank you for that idea we'll put those anvils there they add a lot to the build I think small little detail so thanks for that idea so I also had another small idea from a viewer, a little tiny detail. Um, if you guys remember a few episodes back, I suggested that Minecraft should have some berries on the vines um, that could, you know, randomly drop as a food source. But uh, somebody named um, Bob Nub actually suggested we put emerald ore behind some of these vines. And that sort of makes it look like berries uh, from a distance. So... Yeah, I went ahead and did that in a couple spots here. So, yeah, you can see it sort of looks like berries, I guess. Um, but, yeah, thank you for the suggestion, Bob. Looking good. Thank you for that. And keep on suggesting those small little details, guys, because I really love those. And now that we've done that, uh, let's go ahead and we will head back to the uh, base, go to the mine shaft, and we'll see today's highlighted channels are. All right, guys, so we're down here in the mine shaft today, and I gotta say, this is actually starting to fill up here. We're almost to the end of the uh, end of the mine shaft here, which I did not expect this soon. But, uh, today, the highlighted channel is Connor Irwin, who gave us a good idea last time. Um, and I think I'm actually gonna use it in place of one of the other classrooms I had planned. Um, he said we should make a mob biology classroom, which would be really cool. Uh, we could also have, you know, some plants, plant biology classroom type thing. Um, so that would be really cool. I think that's a good idea. And we could use the mob heads and such. So thanks, Connor, for the idea. We'll go ahead and do that instead of the, uh, the battle training um, yeah, classroom. So, yeah, thanks for that idea, Connor. This is your mind chef. Let's see how you do against the other competitors. So from Connor's mine shaft, we got the following resources. So we got 13 diamonds, and those 13 diamonds are actually good enough to put him on top of the Fortune 3 leaderboard for now. So congratulations. And that's actually the first diamonds we've gotten from a mine shaft in quite some time. Although we did get a boatload of diamonds from when we mined out all the redstone for the ice farm. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, pretty resource intensive, resource gathering intensive episode this time around. But uh, next time we will hopefully finish up the school and also work on some other cool stuff. So thank you guys for your continued support. This has been Cub. Goodbye.